Welcome to the AFR Saints channel, where we provide you daily content on your favorite team, the New Orleans Saints. Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button. Be sure to leave your comments below and smash that like button. Who that? We've been running through this ESPN top 10 position rankings here so far throughout the summer. And if I'll explain it again. I don't really care about the list. I don't I don't care who's ranked where necessarily. It's kind of just a launching point to talk about, you know, topics and different players on the Saints roster, where they fit in, sort of thing. And they um it, it, I guess what's relevant here is that this is voted on by coaches and front office members, scouts. It's not a, a, a media creation. This is an anonymous vote from people that deal with NFL rosters every day, so it has a little bit more credence. So they ranked the top 10 interior offensive linemen, and then the honorable mentions included Eric McCoy. He was not in the top 10. He was included in the honorable mentions. And the very quick write-up on McCoy said, last year's number 10 interior player had a 94.8% pass block win rate last season, 10th among centers. Quote, sometimes he looks like the best center in the game, an NFL personnel evaluator said, but the consistency is not always there, end quote. You know, the Saints are going to have to make a really big decision on Eric McCoy here in this offseason. I mean, as a reminder, McCoy's entering his fourth NFL season. He was a second-round pick. Because he was a second-round pick, we forget he was the Saints' top pick in that draft, but they did not have a first-rounder that year because of the Marcus Davenport draft pick the year before. So McCoy was the first pick of the Saints draft that year, but he was a second rounder. So they do not have a fifth year option. This is McCoy's fourth season. This is his final year under contract. Eric McCoy is an unrestricted free agent after this season, meaning he's free to sign anywhere he wants after this season if the Saints don't extend him. So the Saints have a very interesting um, challenge on their hand here. As we've talked about, you can't pay everybody. It's impossible. That's why we've seen Trey Hendrickson walk. That's why you just saw Marcus Williams walk. They can't pay everybody. So they got to pick and choose who they're going to commit to. And they have committed a lot of dollars to Michael Thomas and to Alvin Kamara and to Ryan Ramchick and to Marshawn Lattimore. And rightfully so. And I, I don't, and they're not done there. Uh, there are young players that are going to get these contracts. And in my opinion, Eric McCoy should be next. We've talked about so many times over the years the value of the center position, the battery as it's made up. And Eric McCoy, as you heard this one NFL personnel evaluator say, sometimes McCoy looks like the best center in the league, but the consistency is not always there. It is worth mentioning this past year that McCoy did suffer that calf injury early in the year, which has, you know, injuries plagued everybody well, with the Saints this year. And uh, we've talked about it. The, they started a record number of players in the NFL for a given season. But the real question isn't, do you want to have Eric McCoy back? Of course you want to have Eric McCoy back. He has proven to be one of the best centers in the game, and he's only 25 years old. I want to underscore that why and why that is so important. Because when you look at the top centers in football right now, especially how they're paid, McCoy is among the youngest in the league. Jason Kelsey at 35 years old, has the highest per-year value of contract. Now, he's got a one-year deal this year, but he's making $14 million this season. $14 million. That nose is just past what the Lions gave Frank Ragnow. Ragnow's 26. Ragnow's 26. He's making thirteen five a year. Ryan Jensen of the Bucks making $13 million a year. He's 31 years old. Corey Lindsley with the Chargers, 31 years old, making twelve five. So Ryan Kelly with the Colts, who's 29 years old, making 12-4. You can see how the market is set, and then everyone who gets a new deal just bests that a bit from 12-4 to 12-5 to 13 million to 13-5 to 14 million. I mean, that's when you look at the top six, seven centers in the league. And they're by age, 35, 26 Ragnow, 
Jensen's 31, Lindsley's 31, Ryan Kelly's 29, Chase Roulier, the Commanders, is 29, Rodney Hudson of the Cardinals is 33, Mitch Morse of the Bills is 30, Connor McGovern of the Jets is 29, Ben Jones of the Titans, who, by the way, is the 10th highest paid center in the NFL. He's making $7 million per year. 33 years old. Brian Allen with the Rams, 27 years old. Keep in mind, Eric McCoy is younger than all of these players. So you're getting a guy who is undeniably in his prime, who's one of the best centers in the game. And if you look at the top 10 centers in the league, and again, this is just one per, you know, personnel evaluator's opinion, but they had last year, McCoy ranked 10th among interior linemen. And that includes guards, by the way. And that, so he's higher ranked among the centers. So if you put him in the top five centers in the league, which I think is fair, behind Kelsey Ragnow, Jensen Lindsley, maybe Ryan Kelly, it's fair to say that next on that list could be Eric McCoy. So if he slides somewhere sixth, you're talking about somewhere between what Chase Roulier, the Commanders, is making at $10 million and what Ryan Kelly of the Colts is making at 12 4 You can't justify making Eric McCoy, in my opinion, the richest center in the NFL. He's a very good player, undeniably. He's one of the top centers in the game. But he's not the top center in the game. So... Would you put Eric McCoy, where would you put Eric McCoy in that list? It's probably going to fall. My guess is McCoy's representation is going to want to make him the highest paid center in the game. They're going to want to eclipse that $14 million per year mark. And I don't think the Saints are going to want to do that. I think you're going to fall somewhere in that $12 million per year range for Eric McCoy. And as valuable as the center position is, you got to find a way to get that deal done. Even if it's a backloaded contract, however they have to make it work, the Saints do cap gymnastics year after year, and they'll do it again here. But when you talk about positions that are replaceable, the, the center position is one that's so important. Look, they were willing to let Teron Armstead walk this year and go into the draft to find his replacement. And hopefully they've, they've done that with Trevor Penning. But the other thing, and you might laugh at this, but the Saints do have one, one bargaining chip that they could play. And I hope it doesn't come to this, but they could. And it's Cesar Ruiz. Don't laugh. Don't you laugh. Yo, you know as well as I do, Cesar Ruiz is playing out of position. Cesar Ruiz is a center. He's a center playing guard. He is out of position. And it shows. At times, he has been massively ineffective playing right guard. Eric McCoy is a guard playing center. Because when he showed up, that's where they had need. So, you just put McCoy in after Max Unger retired, and he was so damn good at center. That when you drafted Ruiz, you said, all right, we'll let him battle it out. But you had a veteran, Drew Brees, who's like, yeah, you're not changing centers on me in my last year in the NFL. So they didn't. And now you're so committed to McCoy at center, because that's where he's been and where he's been so effective. But you've also got Cesar Ruiz, who was a first-round draft pick, who you've got a lot invested in, who has a fifth-year option, by the way, that you could say to McCoy, hey, here's our offer. We have a backup option if you don't like it. You can go test the market in free agency, but is anybody going to be willing to pay you more than we are? My hope is it doesn't come to that. My hope is that the Saints wisen up and they pay McCoy what he's worth and he's willing to understand what he's worth and they get a deal done before the season starts because I would hate to see this go the way that the Marcus Williams deal went. That Marcus Williams is going to go test the market because he thinks he's going to get a number that he's going to, that he thinks he's worth. He doesn't get that number but signs with another team. He's over what the Saints are willing to pay but just marginally over it. That's what happened with Marcus Williams. That's what happened a couple years ago with Mark Ingram. Hope they don't repeat that mistake again with Eric McCoy. But hopefully, they get it done now before the season starts so you don't have these questions next year in the offseason. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.